Hi, my name's Chizzy Rascal and I run an independent radio show called Karma Radio. Each week we release an episode to SoundCloud, it's usually around an hour long and I play out some of the best new bands hitting the UK alternative scene right now, as well as a bunch of household names that we all know and love already. It's a good place to discover some new bands or keep up with the new releases, so come and check it out. We also have a guest on the show each week, musicians from bands such as Holding Absence, Seaway, Funeral for a Friend and a whole bunch more. So I've taken out this part of the show and I've added it to YouTube for anyone that wants to listen to what these artists have to say. But if you want to listen to the full show and listen to the artists' chosen tracks as well, then head over to the SoundCloud page. I'll add a link in the description below. Thank you for listening and this is Karma Radio. Today's guest, Finn from Delaire the Liar. How are you doing, Finn? Yeah, I'm doing very well, thanks, Ryan. How are you? Yeah, really good. You seem like a, you seem a very cheerful mood today. I mean, I've, I've never met you before, so this could be your everyday thing, but a, <laughs> I instantly feel like a good positive vibe from you. It's cool. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you so much. Yeah, I mean, I, tr- I try my best to be a beacon of good energy and positivity, my dude. Yeah. Um, it happen all the time, but this is, it's very nice to speak to someone... Um, that that isn't my parents to be honest which is <laughs> you know <laughs> not saying i don't love my parents because of course i do but yeah yeah is that where you've uh, been the past few months then just in your parents house yeah it is well once i got furloughed lockdown kind of got um a little bit more intense i just kind of bailed and i've just yeah. been here for like the past like three months and it's, it's been very wholesome i've got to say yeah. home very comforts wholesome. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And my cooking is, is appalling, so I'm absolutely blessed to have my mum taking the reins on that one. <laughs> I've, got to say. I've been trying to help out, but like, she's just got like her eyes on everything. Yeah. So, like, anywhere that I am, I'm kind of like ultimately in the way. So, I just kind of like, <laughs> um, just kind of, like stood in the back, just trying to be helpful. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, that's it. <laughs> have you? Yeah, not bad. I see. Uh, so where, where, where are you from then? Are you in uh, London based? Um, my parents live just outside of Oxford. I'm from the Isle of Man originally, yeah. but I've been in London for like the past seven years yeah. or something like that. Because obviously I know Wales are a bit more strict on their lockdown rules and I, I've got friends in London that I take that like, even though the guidelines are being lifted, they're like, I don't want to go out in London yet because obviously it's a lot busier place. But I'm in Bristol and it's a lot, a um, bit more chilled here, I think. Like there's not been too many sort of places where everyone's gathered and going mad. So I've managed to get yeah. out and see some friends, which is obviously very positive. Yeah, that's lovely. I mean, where I am, I'm just like outside of Oxford and I've never like lived here like, as, as like a person before. So the kind of like upside is, is that I don't know anyone. So I've got <laughs> no one to really see. So I'm just kind of like, so I'm I'm following the, the like lockdown guidelines pretty strictly, but it's not yeah. because I want to. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> no choice. So let's talk about the band then. So what what I love personally about doing this radio show, I should, should say, I only started a few months ago because we used to put Amazing. on live we, we used to put on live events, and obviously that's not happening at the moment. So we started doing this like a weekly podcast, yeah. and I've discovered so many bands from it. We had Wargasm on a couple of months ago. We've had Luke and Lizzie Farrell, and then all of you yeah. were on that taste of isolation lineup a few weeks ago so that's where me and a couple yeah, of my yeah. friends discovered you because as soon as you started really? singing we were flawed we were like wow yo oh that's so sick <laughs> yeah, thank you so set. much i'll tell uh, you what Haley williams sings high my yeah. dude <laughs> Well, I think um, some of my friends that we're watching, were, they're, they're, they're much bigger Palmer fans than me because I, I knew, knew like I knew that the singles, but there was one yeah. you did, which I think was a bit more of a, an obscure one. And they were like waiting for this moment because there was like some big moment and apparently you yeah. smashed it. So. <laughs> you know well what, like, because that first, that first Paramore record was like an absolute game changer for me. Like yeah. I remember, it's uh, all we know. And I remember, uh, the, I think the song that they're referring to is called My Heart, that was it, which is yeah. like the last track on that record. And Josh Farrow, like the old guitarist, like the founding member, um, screams at the end of it. And I, I remember hearing it when I was like, I mean, I must have been like 14 or 15 at the time. I remember hearing it and just being like, fuck me. <laughs> it was just, it was so good. And like, yeah, I'm really good friends with um, Ollie from Static Dress. Uh, and like, when we got this opportunity, because Ryan like approached us and he was like, hey, we're doing this thing. Like these people that we've got on board, like it's going to be really fun. And I was like, can we do Paramore? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, oh my God. 
I can, I can finally do my heart and yeah. get someone to like guest on it because I can't scream like very well. Um, but Ollie's amazing, so I was just like, "Fuck yeah, here we go!" Yeah, and it Ollie's is quite a like a, an obscure choice. But, yeah, um, but yeah, it's one of my absolute die-hard favorites. So, um, when did the band come together? Then the band started. We had our first release in 2018, and back then it was just me and what and and my best friend Joey, who's no longer in the band. He left at the end of last year. So yeah, we were a two-piece for like a year and a and a bit. Um, and now the band's expanded and we're a three piece now um, and we've just been working for like for like this past year obviously 2020 kind of like got in the way so it's kind of we're we're kind of like reshaped the whole the whole thing we're moving forward in, in that kind of direction but um yeah i mean we had like a really good 2018 2019 and it ended really strong and then joey kind of like parted ways yeah and then we're just looking forward in, uh, to what this kind of like thing turns into next it's quite malleable um a lot of the songs are quite like high energy and quite high octane but that's how we got started and that's like where we are now but yeah yeah no we've had like a a really cool like a couple of years we've done some really cool stuff like we've got to our first like big moment um was probably opening for creeper at their like at their last show at, at coco in, at the end of 2018 we opened that and we were only really going for about kind of like we released our like debut ep kind of like at the gates like out of, no one knew who we are we only played like three shows before then just to kind of like warm up to it and that was in june in 2018 and then by november November and you know we had this like amazing opportunity and it just kind of like it really kind of like got super hungry so yeah we just kind of kept going from there and last year we got to play 2000 trees for the first time and we got to open for the heavy music awards at Kentish Town Forum which was really cool and then we nice. did like the uh, the last show that we played with Joey was actually the uh, we got to headline the Kerrang Fresh Blood showcase at the Old Blue with Wargasm actually nice. so that was really cool as well so yeah we had a really cool year and looking forward to kind of getting back into the live circuit yeah. again as soon as possible yeah that's good well i mean the name's still I, I don't think although shows aren't happening i think bands are still very much um don't know the phrase to use but it's still there's a lot still going on that i don't think just because of the lack of live shows people are going to kind of forget about these bands you know there's so much going on i mean yeah. wargasm themselves they've had a fantastic few months and you know they haven't yeah, been yeah. live <laughs> show in so long yeah so I, I think for bands like yourselves playing things like taste of isolation there's there's good ways to still be promoting yourselves and you know you're one of the ones i do think fair play to you you're doing it you're doing it well thanks man yeah, yeah. i mean you know, it kind of takes a little bit of time to get your head around how to like the logistics of everything i'm really glad that taste of isolation came when it did because we've certainly learned how to do like the live session thing a lot better now yeah um and i really want to like go all out on the paramour thing we finally got the got like the uh the know-how to kind of really make it something quite special yeah which i think is which is really good yeah and and whatever kind of comes next I, it's, it's a weird one though i think the the live session thing because it takes like it takes a huge amount of work to like do these videos and 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 do these kind of like showcase things and a lot of know-how but it's not a kind of like it's not a sustainable entity because because it requires so much time for people that aren't furloughed and have to work like jobs as well it can be really consuming and no one's off the back of this kind of stuff. So it's like a good kind of thing to get the ball rolling. But it'd be interesting to see where it kind of like extends to throughout yeah. this lockdown. Like putting on the show is obviously not making any money either. And a lot of this stuff has been for charity and, and for, for good causes and stuff like that. If it extends like into you know, the kind of like the winter months and people are still expected to kind of um, put out this kind of content and not be able to kind of not be like financially viable for the artists as well as the platform kind of like hosting yeah you know, there's it's quite it's, it's an interesting shift in the kind of like artist promoter dynamic and like when is the revenue eventually going to start coming back in so it becomes financially viable for artists to perform this way yeah. or how are we going to get the economy back into a place where live shows can finally happen again and a financial benefit can come to everyone to facilitate the con like, perpetuation of this kind of like movement and this kind of like moment in time it's interesting it's interesting to, to, to watch alone be a part of yeah i mean i don't know what the next move would be i mean um, I'm starting to see, like, obviously at the start, I, I do a lot of, like, club DJ stuff, and I noticed there was a lot of live streams on Twitch at the start of lockdown for that, and I've noticed that's starting to die off a bit as people can sort of go out and do more. But because we're yeah. not getting the full thing yet, I do think we're sort of waiting now on the next, the middle ground of, okay, so you can go and see some friends, but you can't kind of go to a live show. So there kind of needs to be, I think there'll be something coming, which maybe we'll see more of in the second half of 2020 mm. of, like I said, not quite full shows, but not quite just sitting on your own watching at home. And whoever masters that, <laughs> I think it's going to do quite well for the next few months. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's almost it's like a bit of a race to see who can crack it first. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like the, yeah. Uh, I just think um, it's interesting. I, I saw like an interesting comment on Twitter, actually. And it was a, um, I think it was John Tolley from Kingston who was just posing the question that like, if venues were to reopen at a quarter of their capacity, so say like, what, like a thousand cap venue opening at 200 with, yeah. with 250 tickets. Is that quarter? It is, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> at 250 tickets. Would a consumer, the people buying the tickets, be willing to pay four times the price for the ticket? Just so it kind of like balances out. Yeah. Because something has got to give. And at the minute, a lot of the pressure is being put on the artists to kind of reduce their their costs for their work. If, and if everything takes like a, a bit of a knock, like if prices for tickets go up and the artists kind of like costs and the venue costs come down there is going to be a point where everyone is losing rather than winning and like yeah. what is the kind of the, the benefit i don't know it's, it's like an interesting thing to to think about yeah well like you said it's, it's who, who's going to come up with the next idea and then it's got to wait and see i suppose how it's all going to get back to normal yeah. but um yeah you I can't wait <laughs> yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna brainstorm this afternoon <laughs> yeah man yeah you and me after this is done <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, cool. So let's play one of your tracks then. So Locked for a Reason. That's the latest single, I believe. I might be wrong. <laughs> yeah. So it's our latest kind of like official single. We dropped two tracks nearly a month ago to raise money for, for Exist Loudly UK. But they're just available on Bandcamp. So okay. it's nothing to kind of like, it doesn't, yeah, so all the money, all the proceeds for that go in there. But yeah, Locked was like the last official single that was released a couple of months ago. Yeah, it's a sad one. All right. Well, let's, uh, so we'll play this and then afterwards we'll talk about some inspirational artists and favourite artists of yours. This is Karma Radio. And so I'm going to ask you now, let's talk some inspirational artists. So yeah. an artist which inspired you, maybe even at a young age, just to get into music, or at a later age, if you were sort of like a fan of music and then decided to start performing for an instrument, is there anyone that you that sort of stands out as really inspirational to yourself? Yeah, I think a lot of my kind of like so the, in like the formative years where I would just my music taste was like my parents' music taste, and I think that that is you know quite true for a lot of people, especially when they're kind of pre ten like time periods. Uh, my parents were always like massive fans of uh, Nick Cave and Tom Waits. And Sparkle Horse, I think, was like a really kind of like influ- influential one. Yeah, I got, do you know Sparkle Horse? Never heard of them. But it's it's like this this guy called Mark Linkus. It's like his his baby. But my parents were in like pub rock bands since before right. I was born, so they used to like play a lot of these songs. So that in my mind, I'm just like, how, like, how can you not know Sparkle Horse? <laughs> yeah. So the Sparkle Horse thing, my parents have been playing like Sparkhorse's music as musicians and also just like in our family home for ages. He's got a really interesting way of like of uh, using words and lyricism and stuff like that. And he's got a song called Happy Man and he's got a song called Pig, which are just two absolute rages. Like they're really weird and they're really cool. And then in Pig, he says that he wants to fuck a car. It's like, <laughs> it's, a really, it's a really strange thing. But yeah, so I think like in my early years, definitely like Sparkle Horse. But as I kind of like devan- began to like develop my own music taste, I was listening to like a lot of La Dispute and Pianos Become the Teeth. And, and they kind of really captured my intrigue in terms of like lyric writing um, and how powerful like the story can be, which is something that I, I mean, I've, I love lyrics. I love reading. I, find I get a lot of my influence from reading, to be honest. But yeah, those two bands were really kind of like pivotal for me when I was about kind of like maybe 15, 16. And then, of yeah. course, there's like Paramore and Fall Out Boy. And I'm a big fan of Bon Iver as well. I think they're amazing. And Justin Vernon is amazing. And where he's taken his career personally is, you know, genre bending and really kind of like interesting to watch as well. Any of those are, I would say, probably like my top kind of 10. Yeah, that's, inf- a, that's, that's a good mix to like you, what you've started off with. And you can kind of see, I, I, I noticed this with vocalists who are like very creative with, you know, with reading lyrics. Like I'm someone that I can listen to a song and I'll pick up maybe 50% of the lyrics, but a lot of the time I'm just kind of listening to if it's catchy, if it's got a cool melody and stuff. But um, yeah, we're, we're chatting to like lyricists like yourself. They seem to have similar tastes in that creative way because Nick Cave's come up before. Which, yeah, which one should we go for then? I think if you want, I think Sparkle Horse deserves okay. a shout. I think, yeah. I think Pig by Sparkle Horse okay, would be cool. wicked. <laughs> Is 
Right, yeah, so that was Sparkle Horse with Pig, which, Finn, you said was one of your inspirational artists from a younger age. So let's now talk about favourite yeah. artists. Now, this doesn't have to be one from a young age, just because I don't know if you're like myself. I kind of, I've got favourite artists for different times in my life. Like, I think from, like, 10 years old to 20, I was obsessed with Blink-182. And now I've kind of moved on. I'm much more into, like, Bring the Horizon and heavier sort of stuff. Yeah. So what, when, if someone asks your favourite artist, I imagine you're probably someone that might not have just one, but let's, uh, let's talk about your favourite. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I could talk about this subject for like hours, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know. Um, <laughs> but I think what lockdown has actually given me is like the opportunity to revisit like a load of records that I'd kind of almost forgotten about. But if I'm being honest with myself at the minute, all I've been listening to is Big Kiss Goodnight by Trapped Under Ice. And since it came out, Punisher by Phoebe Bridges. I think like, and they're two very different energies. Yeah. (laughs) Kind of not, like, they're also kind of not two different energies at all. They're both kind of like, alternatively, maybe Trapped Under Ice has got a bit more kind of like positivity to it than Phoebe Bridges does. Yeah. They're like like quite like hardcore heavy, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's very kind of like quite PMA, kind of like hardcore. And then Phoebe Bridges is quite like depressing, kind of like indie rock. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She she featured on the... uh, I've not listened to her album yet. It is on my list to check out because I've only heard of her through that 1975 song that she's on. And yeah, oh, yeah. very much sort of like soft, lovely voice, nice guitar, but <laughs> a bit different to Trapped Under Ice. Well, yeah, I mean, if you, if you listen to Phoebe Bridges' first record, there's a song in there about literally killing someone. So like, she's a soft, lovely voice, but fuck me, is she dark? Like, yeah. it's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> After Laughter by Paramore is also a perfect example of that, you know. It's got like a real kind of like pop centric um, vibe to the album, the instrumentation. The lyrical content is really dark as well and it touches on some really kind of like exposing and and difficult subjects that Hayley Williams was, was kind of like going through at the time. I think it's, yeah. and that's something that I like about Paramore as well is like, a lot of these kind of genre bending artists, they're not just kind of like moving into different stages and they're not, or rather they are moving into different stages, but they're moving with their audience as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's got a lot to do with how you like develop as a person as well. Like in when you're so uncertain in your teenage years, you want to be, you almost want to be like exclusive, you know, you want to kind of like belong to a certain kind of like field. And as you grow up, your mind kind of like expands and you learn to be more, more inclusive and it's the same with your music taste and it, you should have that kind of same respect with your with the artists that you grow up loving like i can still go back and listen to those records that i was listening to when i was 15 and really enjoy them but if the same band was pumping out the same records like 10 years later i'd be a little bit disappointed to be honest yeah. because it just sounds like a rehashing of everything that they've already done rather than showing any kind of like expl- like exploration or you know any kind of like initiative to develop on what on the foundations that they've already laid i think i think that's great well we've mentioned quite a few there and i'm sure we could probably chat for hours about music so uh, which one should we go for then out of the bands you mentioned and we'll play a track out for the listeners i think we should go for phoebe bridges i know the end which is like the last track off her new record and it's really dark and it's i think it's really cool I don't know if you found this. With all the free time, I'm finding it harder to do the things that you need less distractions for, like reading. I used to read like a book in, I'm not the fastest reader. I'd I'd read like a book, like a good sized Stephen King novel in like a month. Now it's taking me like two or three because I'll start reading it and I've got no distractions, but like I'm almost like expecting there to be something. So I just can't shut away. Yeah, man. I mean, I feel really guilty. I feel really guilty about like, because I'm not working at the minute, normally kind of like reading would be what I would do in my kind of like leisure time. But now I don't, it feels like everything is leisure time and I'm trying to find kind of like motivation to do something kind of like practical. Yeah. Um, reading feels like a, almost a distraction from that. You know, I don't feel like I've earned the right to enjoy that time for myself. It's yeah. quite it's an interesting one. Um, I think that, yeah, I mean, I've, I've acquired loads of books. What are you reading at the moment? Well, at the minute, so I've got, <laughs> uh, I've got the Birth of Loud, which is a, just a book about guitars because I'm an absolute okay. nerd for it. <laughs> uh, 
And I've got Her Body at the Parties by uh, Carmen Machado. I've got uh, a collection of poem poems by E.E. E. Cummings, who's one of my favourite poets. I've got, I've got there. I've got Outlaw Culture by Bell Hooks. I've got Natives by Akala. I, I, mix, I mix it up between fiction and non-fiction. But I, I'm a big fan of fiction. But I'll, I, don't know, I love reading poetry and um, that kind of stuff. But I'm trying to read more kind of like commentary books at the minute, especially with the um, um, trying to kind of like educate myself on um, structural and systemic racism, you know, internal racism and stuff that I may have learned without being aware of. Yeah, um, yeah. So that's kind of like what I've been trying to like dig into recently. And I've been trying to kind of understand a little bit more so I can, you know, try and fucking help in some kind of yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I've, I know a lot of people I've noticed have picked up books on that. And yeah, it's good to see. I think not to go too much into the subject because I was just stressing me right out everywhere. But <laughs> it's, it feels like there is some hopefully positive change at the moment. Like I've never... In my lifetime, I've never known it to be this much of a thing to to be fighting against it, you know. So I'm hoping, yeah, totally. hoping we I mean, are at a bit of a turning point, but it is depressing seeing how just, yeah, <laughs> the world shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's fucking really hard, but there are, in the UK, I think there are progressive steps being made, definitely. But yeah. we, um, I think the, the kind of the intensity of the adversity faced in, in the UK is very different to america but i think that like the the colson statue coming down was amazing you're in bristol right yep yeah it's literally I've, yeah. I've, I've been past it like loads of times amazing yeah so the colson statue coming down that's amazing like um i went to the um to the black lives matter march in oxford and there's a statue of a of an infamous slave trader called cecil rose um and after the march you know that statue's coming down as well, yeah. or if planning permission is approved by the Oxford Council, which is fucking bullshit, basically. Yeah. But that was a really powerful statement as well. So it looks like there is kind of like, or hopefully there will be kind of like progressive change. But I think, you know, we're in a, in a punk rock community. And I think like, if we're not doing our best to be as inclusive as we can, or making those kind of steps to be as inclusive as we can, then what's the fucking, what's the point? You know, you see so many people kind of like preaching about inclusivity. And non-biasing you know and if you're not going to fucking back that up when the time comes then what you do yeah basically as well so. right yeah so that was i know the end by phoebe bridges um finn thank you very much for coming on the show today it's been a pleasure to <laughs> virtually meet you <laughs> yeah you too man hopefully we can meet in person one day yeah well I've, I've seen you about on twitter quite a bit i think we've got quite a fair few mutuals so um I've got to be honest, it wouldn't surprise me if we've met in the past and I've been too drunk. But <laughs> That is often my problem too, I've got to say. Um, yeah, I'll follow you, boo. Yeah. I'll follow you. On <laughs> Thanks, man. Um, yeah, cool. So what's the sort of the next plan for Delair the Liar? Are you going to, you, you touched on the live streams. Do you reckon you'll put yeah. together one for your own material? Because correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe Paramore, the, the cover set was the only one you have done as a band. Uh, no, it's well. We've done. Uh, we did one for um, uh, homeschool fest, right? As well, and we have another one kind of like coming up. And we've been doing these um, these kind of like uh, it's mainly been me solo, but we may well do some of our own stuff as well. So yeah, and then I don't know. We've just been because of like everything that's kind of been going on. We did some like recording at the start of the year. That's kind of like we've we've basically released most of. So we just started writing again, which is great. So in the in the hopes to kind of have something together in the in the next kind of like coming months so we'll see what happens in that yeah, respect nice. but yeah just trying to remain as active and, and as in touch as we can i think is really important yeah so we'll try and do everything basically <laughs> and uh, i'll get back in touch with you for this next step that we're going to be working on our, uh, our genius idea <laughs> that we haven't worked out yet <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. cool um, um, yeah well i'll let you go and um yeah as you said hopefully good to meet you in person soon and all the best mate absolutely Alright, mate. Cheers, thank you, bye. This is Carmel Radio.